hey, Racer Rob here with the Tegrid Auto Care, and this customer has an 81 Chevy uh, Corvette, and he did some forum research, and he was told there's no self-diagnostics. There are, but the ALD assembly line diagnostic thing is buried underneath the ashtray, so it's just hidden. And once I connect my scanner into it, I'm going to have full diagnostics with codes. So it's just finding the information and finding out where it's at. And don't ever trust everything you read on the internet. Ever, ever. Some of it's good, you just got to dig through it. Okay, so here is one of the tools that I love. It's the Snap-on Veris Pro workstation. You see I've got the bigger screen here, and this is gonna help me have full diagnostics on this Chevy Corvette. So the first thing I did was I went in and I checked codes, and I've cleared it since then, so I'm showing this by demonstration, but I can check codes, and the trouble codes are basically the system saying, hey, I'm running too lean, this one actually had a map sensor code, TPS sensor code, and both of those parts have been replaced. Obviously, it didn't fix it because the codes still come up. So. But I do want to show you that this machine, and again, I, I love Snap-on. They're, they're not reimbursing me anything like that. I just want to share with the, my fellow technicians how they can become car doctors and also auto, re, auto vehicle owners to ask to see if they've got diagnostic equipment, things like that. And the Snap-on Veris Pro is like, um, for me as Dr. Rob, it's like my EKG machine x-ray machine, blood test, all in one. Right now, what I'm doing right now is I'm gonna read, see, this This is a brilliant thing. This owner had recently purchased this from another private party that spent $2,000 replacing injectors, um, complete exhaust system, TPS, um, O2 sensor, all because it's running too rich, and I'm gonna show you a little bit later in the next shot, that they replaced all these parts without determining what the computer's controlling. So, as you can see here, I've got RPM, exhaust, map sensor, knock sensor, uh, batteries, coolant temp sensor, TPS, all of these things. And there's gonna be two parts of this video, to be honest with you. One's gonna be the, this is how I diagnose it, and what we've done to, uh, uh, find the repair and the number two is going to be actually the repair. So um, To talk about this a little bit when I when it was running I can see the O2 sensor which exhaust measures the exhaust of 900 millivolts is rich 100 millivolts is lean so it's supposed to cycle up and down this O2 sensor was pegged at 900 So right away I know hey, we're running rich the computer sees it's running rich and All the other readings were good coolant temp sensor things like that and then what, I, what other um, tools that I use to diagnose this is I have Mitchell On Demand, which is my information system. And if you're gonna troubleshoot something, you absolutely better understand how it works. And I tell my guys, my fellow master technicians in training, if you're working on something, you better study it and learn how it works and use a wiring diagram so you can troubleshoot these things out. I mean, that, that's half the problem today is getting the right information. Because I'm gonna be honest with you, this is a very rare crossfire fuel injection system. Let's kind of come over this way. Um, it's called the crossfire because it's got two throttle body systems. One, this left bank throttle body system feeds the right bank and this right bank feeds the left bank, so it's a crossfire fuel injection system. And, man, what really drives me crazy is unfortunately we had an expensive parts changer. They replaced both of these throttle body units. Very expensive. And obviously that didn't fix the problem, but you've got to dig deeper. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm just, why don't we do this? So we've got the two throttle body new, the TPS is new, the MAP sensor is new. Um, complete new exhaust from the engine to the uh, tailpipe with a new O2 sensor, over a thousand dollars easy. And I want you to come look. They were going after the, um, the cause 
or I'm sorry, going after the effect, and didn't figure out what the cause was. And these T-tops, this um, owner lived down on the coast here in Oregon, rains a lot, misty, it'll rust, you know, stainless steel to make a joke. And it's, and it's leaking water, so what I did as a technician is first I test drove it to verify that it was running rough. Um, I didn't see the check engine light on, so right there I was like, well, we'll see if there's codes, things like that. I actually used my snap-on, kind of highlighted another tool here. This is my snap-on um, scope and a four gas analyzer. It's got, if, you, if you're gonna work on cars, fellow technicians, I know this is old school, because OBD2 does not um, quote, you don't need a four gas analyzer as much, but I disagree with that. If you really wanna know what's going on, you sniff the exhaust, you know, it's a stool sample worth every penny. It's got the built-in four gas analyzer, big screen, and you can actually find these on uh, eBay for, you know, 1500 bucks. So it's not a bad deal at all. And the bonus is you can scope, um, test out ignition systems on the owner vehicle. So that's what I highly recommend using the Snap-on MT3100 and um, the uh, MT3100 form gas and the Counselor 3100 uh, scope. So that's another tool. In my book, um, very, it, it's, you gotta have it. That's just the way I roll. So anyway, and you gotta have a common sense with just two eyeballs. I always tell my technicians that take away all these computers, take away all these complex things. If you have nothing and you're trying to troubleshoot this for a customer, um, you, use, your, use your eyeballs, man. So come look. This is actually the computer. It is originally mounted behind the battery there. And if you look, see the corrosion on that? That's, that's the problem, the programmable read-only memory. That's how we update older computers. You just replace that problem. Matter of fact, with this customer, we're putting a Hypertech, Hypertech chip in it for higher performance. But look at that. Would you trust that running your computer or your vehicle? And I've already fixed it, but when I disconnected this uh, connectors, there was corrosion on the wires. So my point is that um, really simple for my fellow technicians is don't be expensive part changers. Make sure you have the Snap-on Veris Pro or an equivalent scanner, um, a four gas analyzer, you can find them on the internet. Um, wiring diagrams, I use the Mitchell one there. <clears throat> so you have the right information. And last but not least, if you don't understand how the system works, that's okay, study it. You know, there's plenty of information out there. Identifix is another good source for information that we use. So to kind of wrap up with the tools, I'll call this a tool section. Good scanner, good information system, like Mitchell On Demand. I know those are all data as well too, where you get wiring diagrams. The gas analyzer, because this is gonna tell you what's actually going on with the vehicle as far as the emissions go. So, and last but not least, a lot of common sense. Yeah, so I've taken the covers off for um, display, but the other thing I noticed was you always want to check the connections. And if you look real close, you can see that there's a green tint to it. You even see it falling off in my hands. This is the green goop of death. Bad connections, they usually cause that green connection there. A good, a good way to clean that off is just electrical cleaner. Um, no carb cleaner, no uh, brake clean, electrical cleaner. And be very, very careful with this. I actually just use a, a very light brush, um, not a metal one, maybe even a toothbrush or something like that. So that way you're not scraping things up. So I, I'm not gonna clean this one up, but I did it to the connectors that these went into, was I just used the uh, electrical cleaner little brush and I brush that stuff off make sure those are nice and clean 
And then here's another tip that I found out too just recently. Um, and, and this is this is with all, when we do tune-ups or computer repairs, things like that. A lot of times we fixed loose connections with the, st the Stabilidins. It's uh, oh you know I can't remember. Oh yes, yeah, Stabilant. Stabilant 22A. It's basically an electrical sealant that helps connections. It's a BWD CL85 part number. So we put a little bit of this. You know, sparingly, of course, everything's within moderation. So a little bit of that on the connectors, plug them back in, make sure there's a tight connection. These are also, um, this Crossfire fuel injection system had a bad reputation because the guys didn't know how to fi fix them. This actually has a slide-on connector. The new ones are much better, but these still worked. You just have to make sure when you put the new one together that you bend it in a little bit so it makes a better connection. It's as simple as that. And just to recap, part one is we verified the vehicle's running rich, and here's the tools I use to find that out. I use the Snap-on Veris Pro workstation because it does have self-diagnostics. Um, I use the Snap-on four gas analyzer to read the emissions so I know it was running rich for sure. And I'm kind of sharing this with you and recapping just to show you what it takes to fix today's cars. You have to have a good information system. I have Mitchell on demand as well with a wiring diagram. And one thing I forgot during the troubleshooting is I use the Fluke 88 multimeter. Honestly, it's more expensive than most, but it's worth every penny and will help you fix and diagnose cars accurately. So I love that. And then, you know, don't forget um, the most common uh, or most valuable tool you have is still your eyeballs. You know, all your sights, sound, smelling, touching, you know, common sense because this, this should not have happened. So that's why I wait to make these videos, to educate my fellow techs, what tools it takes to do it, what mistakes not to make, and then for customers as well, you know, don't be afraid to ask a shop when you're looking around, what kind of tools do you have, what kind of diagnostic equipment. One thing that we do is um, go visit your shop first, you know, think of it like a interview, you know, take the time out to find that shop. So that's it, the end of part one. Part two is going to be the actual diagnostics, so stay tuned.